their equipment and manpower, but the rescuer's position was already becoming dangerous. You take an immediate look over, and you're faced with this horrendous drop, uh, sort of 100 feet or more, and about six feet, six to eight feet from the bottom, um, there's this little group of figures, and I could see Dave. Keep coming to me. Rock face was absolutely horrendously treacherous. Keep it was breaking away. It was very, very slippery. It was wet. Move to your right. I got two firefighters who are trained in rocks rescue, got them attached to safety Keep lines going. and sent them on down over to Dave with the equipment. The problems that I was faced with were the difficulties of the situation that the casualty, uh, Mrs. Stokes, her position relative to, to the base of the cliff, the safety of Dave Rolls, the paramedic down there, the safety of the two firefighters, you're aware of very rapidly incoming tides in the Severn Channel, that the currents that swirl around that rock face are very horrendous, they're treacherous. Dave, you've got 20 minutes on this tide. 20 minutes. It's like a countdown, really. From my point of view, I couldn't really rush it that much uh, uh, for fear of aggravating her spinal injury. The bit that I was worried about was actually moving Mrs. Stokes from the crevice in the rock into the stretcher. The danger with a fractured spine is if you twist the body, in Mrs. Stokes' case, she would have lost movement in her lower limbs. She could move all her limbs at, at that particular time. And my main worry was that if she was paralyzed, after we'd moved her, really, it was down to, to our mishandling. This arm's all right, it's not injured at all. I have just stood there waiting, wondering, trying to work out what was happening, listening to instructions being shouted. Time just seemed to drag. Dave, you've got 10 minutes, 10 minutes on this tide. You've got to come out of there. Move it on, we're ready to win where you are. One of them could have slipped, dislodged the paraguard stretcher, perhaps even taken the casualty with him. You're just aware of the dangerous position that they are in, and it's not getting any better, it's just getting worse. All I wanted to do was to be able to pick up the group and lift them up onto the top of the cliff and, and, and to get them safe. And where they were, their position was getting to the point where it was untenable, that they could not have stayed there much longer. And at that point, who is going to make the decision as to what you're going to do? I don't know. Okay, okay. Okay, secure the head. Okay. Okay. Don't ride away. Okay, Dave, bottom strap signed up. Right, she's all secure. Okay, okay. 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 we're going to take you up the cliff now, okay? So you'll be turned this way and that, and yeah. you'll be up right. Take so her up don't head first. Yeah. Head. Back to winch. Take up. Okay, okay. okay. here we go. Okay, we've got this one. Okay, start swinging a feet right. Despite the rush to get Kay to safety as soon as possible, the fire brigade had to inch her up the cliff face painfully slowly. Any sudden movement would make her injuries more severe. It was a very slow, inch by inch process of, of lifting, winching, lifting, winching. As the rescue team actually at the cliff base made their way very slowly to the top. Get your balance. Okay. We're nearly there. If I keep going, it's going to get easier climb. Take up on the weight! Good girl, good girl. Not long now. Kay Stokes was flown by helicopter to French A Hospital in Bristol. She had indeed broken her back in four places. Two and a half years later, Kay seems to have made a remarkable recovery. Little Louise is now walking, and the family has started to put the memory of that awful day behind them. But it's not been easy. There we go. A historic town that all but closed.